Good morning, it's the first round of the tour. We are at Greenwood. Today was 2100, which is green fee, caddy fee, golf cart and transportation. I would describe this as a 27 holes and it's not overly demanding, which is great because my mate is having his very first round in Thailand and I'm going to have to look after him, especially around the greens. This opening round we're playing with a golf bar. It was an 11 o'clock pickup and a 12.40 tea time, which isn't a lot of fun for me. I much prefer to play early rather than the heat of the day. So I'm putting up an arrow where I want to go, which is a little fade towards the big tree in the background. And with only three swings as a warm-up, it's no surprise that I'm in bother straight away. Now I can get over these trees no. if I can hit it properly. But no harm done. 108, downhill, easy pitching wedge. And it's right down the banner. Wow! Wow, wow, wow! And off the back. Now you're going to see a crazy thing here. We're playing as a four ball. But that doesn't mean there's four people on the green. Ooh, that faster. means there's right. eight. And it gets rather confusing at times. It also makes it a little awkward for where I want to put the camera. How many, Griff? Seven. Oh, shit. Stand wherever you like, doesn't matter, this is holiday golf. Okay, six. Always remember it's holiday golf. Yes. Sure. Amen. Nice. It's very easy for me here to see what my faults are, but my main problem is jet lag, tiredness, and being bloody hot. Oh, left again. Sorry. Yeah. Absolutely no choice here. Can't get over, no point attempting to go through. Let's just chip it out, get it to wedge distance. If I've got a wedge in my hand, I always feel like I can make now we par. Go for the green. Oh, but you're not going to make a par hitting it that yeah, fat. fat. I've most definitely got a few issues today. Thin. Everything but proper. One of the hard parts with coming to Thailand is getting used to the grass and the soil and figuring out how you're going to play it. So there's always a few mistakes in the first few rounds until you get used to the conditions. Well, I've used my entire handicap for the front nine in two holes. No real issues on this tee shot. It's fairly straightforward. All we got to do is actually hit it down the green. And I am not aiming at the green. Filming as a four ball in Thailand is no different to filming as a four ball. In England, in England, it upsets yeah. my setup routine of standing behind the ball, looking down my target line, and making Not sure bad. I'm aiming the right yeah. direction. Sure, sure. Something that I don't get when I play on my own. Oh. 
Old man. <laughs> the first par five, and it's very simple. Aim down the left at the bunkers and miss them. Yes, he was that as well. Sometimes it's easier to miss something than it is to hit something, such as golf. That's better. At last. Dong dong. Chipping is quite an issue. I like to play my sand wedge a fraction open, which means more bounce, which means sometimes you knife it. Fifth hole, 365. I've been told to go straight at the bunkers because I can't reach them. That's where a good caddy comes in. They know how far you hit it. What they don't know is if you're going to hit it straight or not. I've rattled through the trees. I've got a 9-iron left. No harm done. Until you do that. Again. And again, trying to open the face of the sand wedge, and you lose complete control over what the bounce is doing on the grass and the soil. <laughs> this isn't looking no very bogey. pretty, and two of them are handicapped okay, no but I'm even. But you never give up. No matter how tired you are, you never give up. My first par in Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> the bunkers you can see aren't in play for me. It's just a question of hitting them straight over. Bottom groove. Three wood is absolutely stupid. It's going to put me in no man's land. I'd have been far better off hitting a hybrid or even a four iron there. Okay. Flag's on the left, so I'm leaving it alone. I don't want to be anywhere near those bunkers. You just can't get on the back of the ball out of there. That bloody uh, grass, grass, grass your foot, isn't it? And it would be nice if I could actually make decent contact with the ball around the greens. I just don't seem to be able to do that. But that's the change, the change in the grass as you come to a different part of the world. Now this is one putt I should have walked away from. I should most definitely have stepped away from this. <laughs> and we've doubled both par fives on the front nine. Little dog leg to the right. I can go straight over that bunker. Job done. That's the first part of it. Second part is a seven. Oh, straight left. Oh, 
diamond. Another poor pitch. A little chip. Oh, then a little blade. Put ten over after eight. Now stroke one. The only thing you can do wrong here is to bail out so far left you make the second shot too long and out of the rough. Anyone think he knows what he's doing? Uphill and over a front bunker. Club. Come cap. Despite the tiredness, the lack of warm up, the long journey to get here, you only need one shot to get your round going. Perhaps this hole is what we need to get positive. Look how the putt changes in length when you move the camera. Okay, carry tip now, 20 bar. <laughs> Off to the back nine. Let's see what we can actually do. The first thing uh, we're doing I don't want to be in the rough is the taking rough. the wrong club. I'm getting strange. 3-4-3, three, three. there's no the way I should have a driver in my hand. All the driver is going to do for me is leave me an odd yardage. These are the mental mistakes you make when you're so tired. <laughs> and there we have it, 80 yards out of soggy rough. Look how wet the fairway is to my left. The only thing that can happen here is disaster. Oh, fat. So soft. Fat, soft, well, short, chipping over a bunker. There's my disaster. And we double it up with a very odd bounce to the left. I have a funny feeling this hole is going to appear again in a later video. There's my mate stood right behind me. He did it all tall. Absolute pain in the backside having someone stood behind you while you're trying to play. Par 3. Again, fat, short. short. Very short. What on earth is going to get this round going? Well, I've got pitching wedge here because the flag's way up the back. I can land this on the green. I can run it out. This is very much an English shot. And we do it well. Okay, now, now 40 bucks. He's uh, getting into the swing of it now. Exhibition this is where a positive caddy comes in. She doesn't say out of bounds left, trees bunker right. She just says aim at that bunker in the distance. And that's the kind of positive attitude, the picking of target that you need all round your own golf course. Another fat one. If I can just nip this, I can spin this, and then I can make my par. Job done. So when you're playing at home, if you're looking at trees and water and sand, instead of looking at where you want the ball to go, then guess where your ball is going. You should always focus on a target. Here I'm told, aim at the bunkers in the distance. Absolutely no negative mentions of what's left and what's right. There I was told right of the bunkers. 
So a bit of a wishy-washy okay. direction gets a wishy-washy result. 100 yards up the hill, camera in the wrong place, fat as you like. Nice little pitch, walk off with a par. No matter what mistakes I make, if I can get the ball the wedge distance, I can make a par. Yeah, I was just told that that chip is downhill. And that always provides a little bit of fear. But then all you need is a good caddy and you start holing at the left hand bunkers and slide it. Oops. Another hole that perhaps had I had my mental faculties about me, I'd have hit a three wood. The list of mistakes just grows and grows. Okay. That's mainly down to tiredness. Downhill and the greens running away from me. You can see how white and shiny it is. There's no stopping that chip. No, I didn't quite hit it where I wanted to. Oh, Simon! Just a wedge over the top, get it back on my hole. Fat again, hit it into the trees. Get a bounce off the cart Go path. Away. Leave myself a hundred. I'm back in a position where I believe I can make a par. Give me a wedge. I'm going to make a par. Oh, you forgot to hit it, Simon. This way it's on the border of Jimmy and it's... Just been told to hit it over that tree in the distance. But I'm really quite tired now. Long way to go. A sensible five wood. I hadn't planned to have 200 yards left into this green. But it's a good yardage for me. So who cares? Thank the lady boy. You're picking out targets to aim at and ignoring whatever is left and right is the best way of playing golf. You cannot go through a round of golf staring at the trouble and worrying about it. Pick a tree, pick a bunker that you can't reach, pick something to aim at. Make a positive intent to aim and hit the ball to the target that you have chosen. If you aim at the world, you will hit it somewhere. But I think a lot of the errors today have been tiredness, heat, not having the mental faculties to take a three wood off certain tees. Okay. Trying to push now on this hole, right? If I get a when I shouldn't hole, really be pushing. Out to dinner. Okay. Just been told to go over the left hand bush. Yeah, what a good idea. I'm not even sure I can do that. 
take us all Again, out for dinner. I wish I'd sent the caddy back to the cart for the three wood. But that's tiredness for you. Oi. I'm throwing my right shoulder out. Look how we're going. Is that okay? I'm not sure. Not sure. Yeah. <laughs> I have a funny feeling it's a yen of a hole I should be hitting a three wood on. Yeah. Okay.